Are you a face swapper, a fan of technology that puts one face onto another person's body in a variety of ways? Well, me too, actually. And you're gonna wanna stick around for this video because I'm gonna show you a fun workflow in Comfy UI that uses the turbo models and the Reactor Comfy UI custom node to create face swap images in a super fun way. I've included a link to the workflow in the description, so let's stop wasting time and let's just do this. So here's the workflow when you first load it in, and it's designed for ease of use, not how things flow neatly from one thing to another in the chart. This is a functional thing and especially designed this way so that I can show you this in an easy way. First, you need to know that the model that I'm using for this particular demonstration is the Realities Edge XL LCM plus SDXL Turbo, which creates amazing images in just 10 steps with a very low CFG, as many of these new Turbo models are doing. And there are some really cool ones coming out, all have different styles to them. And and if you'd like to see a breakdown of some of these XL turbo styles, I'd love to do one for you. But if you don't want it, fine, I'll just, I'll just do other things. I've loaded that model up here in the checkpoint up in the upper left. I've closed up things that I don't need that I'm not gonna be messing with. This is a place for what would be a negative prompt, which you can use, but I don't generally for this particular exercise. I've got these steps in the turbo scheduler set to 10 and you can just leave it there. You can always change these things if you want to. I've got the width set to a pretty generous 768 by 11. 1104. There's no real science to that 1104. That's just what I did and it worked real well. The sampler I've got at Euler Ancestral, you can play with those. You can always change any of this stuff, but this is a good starting point. I have the reactor custom node installed. And if you load this workflow and you get the red message that says, hey, you don't have these custom nodes, just load the Comfy UI Manager, which I'm sure you have installed and get those missing nodes installed and then you'll be ready to go. One of the things that makes this technique work so well is the use of these face restoration models. Being fairly new to Comfy UI, I had some trouble getting the face restoration model to work. First, it wasn't being found in the drop-down menu. I have all these other installations of Automatic 1111 and I know I have face restoration models here and there on my computer. So it was a matter of finding out exactly where these models needed to be and putting them there manually because installing the models from the Comfy UI manager did not seem to put them in the right place and I wasn't able to choose a face restoration model. And if you don't choose a face restoration model, you're going to find some pixelated results. Nobody wants that. Once I have the face restoration model chosen, I leave the rest of this as it is for now. We may come back to this input faces index in just a little bit. We're going to leave this accessible. The only thing we're going to change here really is the seed because that's how we're going to see multiple iterations uh, in rapid succession with a similar style. You'll see what I mean. I'm going to leave the CFG scale at two right now. You can always play with that, but that's a good starting value. And then here I have my positive prompt. Up here, we have the image that we would use for the face swap. Before we do any face swapping, I'm just gonna generate a few images with this model to show you what it looks like. So I'm just gonna bypass this reactor node completely by right mouse clicking on it and clicking bypass. The other thing you're gonna to need to do to make this work the way we want it to is to click the extra options box up here and click on auto queue. This will feed the prompt repeatedly into the system. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure of is that in the sampler custom, you have control after generate set to fixed. We've got a starting prompt here, 50 year old man wearing a casual outfit but at the park at golden hour, just gonna go ahead and click on Q prompt. It'll load up the model, which is already loaded in my case. And there's the man in the park. Now that was again with 10 steps, wearing a casual outfit at the park. If you haven't seen this demonstration before how fast it is, I'm just gonna type in real time here, sitting on a bench. And as it iterates the 10 steps, much quicker than normal, we're gonna get updated images. Now, as I typed, it started to do the generation. So we may see a couple of iterations there. So now we've got a guy in his 50s sitting on a bench in the park at golden hour, just like we said, and it only took just a few seconds. So let's just say wearing a suit again, it catches up with the prompt and then there's the suit. Okay, so you get the idea. We can generate pictures of this guy all day, wherever we want to, and that's fun and you should do it. But we're here to talk about the face swap. So to break down a little bit of what's going on here on the screen, this image, which was created with our prompt, is what's going to be fed into the reactor node and then switched with this face and then output here. So what's happening, since the reactor node is being bypassed right now, we're not getting any face changed here. But all I have to do is turn on this node by clicking bypass again and in just a few seconds, the face is switched. Now here's where it gets fun. We did the seed trick the other day to rapidly get variations. All I'm gonna do here is click the arrow next to the noise seed incrementally 
and it will quickly create in 10 steps a new image and then just in a few seconds replace the face there too. So we've got the original here and then the replaced face up there. So let's take a face of someone more recognizable so that you can really see what's going on here. So to do that, we're gonna to go to Google Images and I just wanna show you this little trick because there's a lot of concern about using copyrighted images. Let's just figure out whose face we might wanna switch out for. Let's just say Liam Neeson. I, I use them all the time. So Liam Neeson, when we get to the search results here, we wanna click over here on Tools and then Usage Rights and then Creative Commons Licenses. That way we're not gonna get into all kinds of trouble for using copyrighted images or images that require a license. So we're just gonna choose one that's representative of his face. This will do nicely for our purposes. So there's a couple of ways we can bring this image into the Comfy UI interface. One of my favorite ways is just to click the image and then drag it over to the Comfy UI tab that little box from Google is going to pop up and then just drag it right onto the source image. And because it's still running, it's just going to update it in just a couple of seconds. See, boom, we've got it. I didn't have to do anything. I can just drop in different faces all day long and it's going to update basically in real time, just a couple of seconds, as long as it takes to iterate the next one. So see, there's the new image and then there it is with the face swap. So let's just choose somebody else real quick. How about Robert De Niro? We'll make sure we got the Creative Commons license and get a good frontal picture. So we'll find a picture, this one, I click on it. Now I'm gonna show you the other way I like to do this. Now this only works with the Opera browser, which I really like just for this. This is the reason I use the Opera browser. What I can do is I can right mouse click this picture, click on copy image, and then go over to the Comfy UI tab. And then when I click on the button to choose file to upload, I get this image right up here. I get these images, which are the last three that I downloaded, and then the one that's in my clipboard. So I just click on that and there it is. And again, in just a couple of seconds, there's his face in there mixed out. And we can go through the seeds and all of that. Let's put him somewhere else. Sitting in a smoky bar with a glass of wine, a jukebox in the background. So again, as I'm typing this, it's creating the image, the preview image, and immediately putting the face on it. How fun is this? To me, this is a ton of fun. So here's a fun exercise. Let's go to the Realities Edge XL model page and scroll through some of these sample images, find one of a person so we can do a face swap. We could do that. Let's just keep looking. This is good. Why don't we do this one here? Simple, a woman, mage, cyberpunk, armor, undefined. That's it, that's a pretty simple prompt. That's the power of this model. So I'm just gonna paste that in there, see what happens. Now, obviously, Robert De Niro's face is not gonna be a good match, no matter how many times you iterate through the seat. So let's find a woman. Let's make her blonde, and then why don't we do like Jennifer Lawrence? So we're gonna go back to the same idea. We're gonna get a, right up at the top, gonna to find a Creative Commons license picture that looks like the Jennifer Lawrence we want. We'll take this one. I'm just gonna do the drag and drop. And we just wait two seconds, two, and there she is. I messed with the seed. It's not instant like the first demo I did when we were doing resolutions of 512 by 512. Keep in mind, we're at 768 by 11 something. And these are really high definition images. We're doing only 10 steps, but these are great. Look, we can zoom in here. There's, that's, that's good stuff for 10 because truly some of these XL renders can take quite a while. Let's do a little bit more. Let's go back and get another sample. Let's use this one here. We'll copy the positive prompt. We'll paste it in here, see what we get. We don't want you that you're not a good face swap. I was thinking maybe something like Betty White. Perfect. Drag, drop, bamboo. And then we can go through the seeds. That's not that good. Let's get one where she's older. So this is an example of showing that it's not perfect. That doesn't, I mean, you can kind of see her in there, but it's not really that great. But what you can do is change the prompt from old lady to just say Betty White. Now, a lot of these models, since they're not trained specifically on an, a particular actor or actress, sometimes it can get close, but not quite. Like, for example, if you look at this, yeah, that looks kind of like her, right? Like, you could kind of say, I'll bet you that was supposed to be Betty White, but then you do the face replacement, 
and now you've got Betty White for sure. So it's a way to clean up some of these AI generated faces that are trying to be somebody but they don't quite make it without having to have a whole model or even a Laura of them. You just do a quick face swap like this of a real picture and it does a pretty good job. Let's just go through a few seats and see how this translates. So see again, that looks pretty much like her, but it looks way more like her after you do the face swap and, and using the GAN really makes a huge difference. I'll turn that off and I'll show you what the difference is. So look at that, that is without. Like you can really see the pixelation there. It's not that great. I mean, it still looks like her, and if it was a small image, it'd be fine. But the difference is that just turning on, I mean, that's worth doing. Now let's do something a little bit crazy. Betty White dressed as Wonder Woman. See what happens here. It'll take a couple of iterations. There she is. Okay, so that's a younger version, but come on. If I was to say white hair or gray hair, there you go. This is a great example. This is a great time for me to show you why this didn't work. The reason this didn't work is because it found another face first. Earlier I said we might come back to this section right here and we're doing it now because this box right here, Input Faces Index, basically is referring to which faces in this image are you going to replace? And it works from left to right. So in this case, this guy right here whose face is showing, he's face zero. And this was set up for what? face zero. So what we want, now there's no, this is a guy here, but there's no real face detected here. So I don't think he counts. So the next face we see is this one. So this would be one. So if we change this number to one and click okay, and just wait two seconds, uh, did I do it? Nope. You know what? It does see a face. If you drill right in there, you can see where it tried to do a face. So I was wrong. So we had to put this on two. Yep, there she is, see? So now if I wanted all of these faces to change to her, I would go zero, comma, one, comma, two, and so on for as many faces are in the image. We might be able to demonstrate that if I do uh, Betty White and her sister. Who knows who that might be? Let's just see if they put another one in here. Here we've got it. Okay, so now we've got two of them, and actually because it only sees two faces and we've got it set for index two and the count actually starts at zero, it's not seeing either one of these. So if we want to put both of these as Betty White, we can just change this to zero comma one. And then wait a second and boom, see, now they're both. We've got the younger Betty and the older Betty standing right next to each other. Truly wonder women. Scroll through the seat. I love the juxtaposition of the old and younger Betty Weiss, selling ice cream no less. What else could they be selling? Puppies. I got, there we go. Now we got a puppy here. And Betty White loved animals. This is so accurate. Betty White and her younger sister, whatever her name is. Let's choose somebody else in a different scene. You got a whole new prompt here. Old man with messy hair, a scruffy beard, torn clothes in an alley with a broken leather belt holding a cat. But when I type that in and it switched out her face, I really don't think Betty White's face works here, do you? So let's do somebody else. We're gonna go William H. Macy. This picture will work just fine. That says licensable. License details. You are free to share, copy, and redistribute material in any medium or format for any purpose, even commercially. All right, that's good enough for me. So let's take this image and drop it in. Watch what happens. I figured this would be good for that, right? Let's keep let's keep seeding through. Yeah, I mean, right, perfect. Maybe instead of a kitten, he holds a ukulele. Did you guys know that William H. Macy plays the ukulele? There it is. How about this? Instead of an alley, he's sitting with a family on Christmas morning with the broken leather belt. But see how it's doing the face swapping in real time as I type it. I freaking love it. I don't see the family though, do you? How about we emphasize with a family? See what happens. Boom, 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 boom. Now, there we go. <laughs> okay, well, we added a couple of kids in there, but because we still got it indexed for zero and one, that little girl got his face too. So if we don't want that, obviously, we just take out the zero. And now it will be back to her. See? All good. The other nice thing about having this seed fixed is we can iterate on this image. Let's like, let's for example, let's see if we can get him to smile. Smiling old man. There we go. 
So you can watch the progress in the preview, and then there you go. Now everybody's happy. Look at him. And maybe instead of scruffy and torn clothes, he's wearing an Armani suit. There you go. So see, he's cleaned up his act. He's playing the ukulele. Everybody's happy for his recovery. All right, well, I could do examples all day. I know this because I've been doing them myself, but you don't need to watch me iterate through every face on every body in every scenario you can possibly imagine, but you can do it. The link to the workflow for this is, of course, provided in the description. I would love to know how and if you use this and any other ideas you have. One of the great things about Comfy UI is I'm always getting inspired for ways to put some of these notes together. And I know other people have probably already done it a thousand times better than me. So if you've got some nodes or custom workflows or something that you'd love to share and see demonstrated here, let me know. Or if there's a particular task you'd like to get done in Comfy UI, and if I don't know how to do it and I think it's cool, well, then I'll go find out how to do it and then we'll learn together. What do you think? Now, in exchange for all of that, all I ask is for you to click that little red button that says subscribe. It doesn't cost you any money. And if you like this kind of stuff, and, and who doesn't, then uh, subscribing might be a good idea. Something to think about.